quadratic inequalities. You've solved inequalities in the past in, ele in elementary, junior high, right? But they were always like linear inequalities. So 2x plus 5 is greater than uh, 1, say. Okay, so back in junior high, you would isolate x. So, so tr you treat the inequality like an equal sign. So I subtract 5 to both sides and then divide by 2. And so your answer was on a number line. X is greater than 2 would have been your solution. Any number greater than negative 2, sorry, would work. So if I plug in negative 1, for example, 2 times, guys, negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Is 3 greater than 1? Yeah, so any number greater than negative 2 would make that inequality true. There's not just one answer, it's going to be a range of answers. And that's what you've done in the past. A couple of things you need to remember. If you divide by a negative, if I had, is, when is negative x greater than 2? What happens to the inequality if you divide or multiply by a negative? It changes direction. Yeah, it flips. Okay, so if you multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality flips, it changes directions. Okay, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality will flip. That's important to remember, okay? It's rare, but it might come up. Okay, so let's talk about solving a quadratic inequality. It's a little bit more complex, but you have pretty much all the tools in your tool belt to, to solve them because we've finished quadratics and we've been practicing quadratics every single unit. So just like quadratics, we want... One side equal to zero. Okay? So you want one side equal to zero. And guess what we're going to do next, which we always do in quadratics? No, not solve. Before that, factor. We're going to factor it. From there, we need to do a test, interval test. And I'm going to help show you how to do that. Okay? So this guy already has one side equal to zero, so we can go to factoring. What does that factor to? X. Minus 2 and x plus 2. Okay. So we have two values that are our critical values. And so our critical values are when it actually equals 0. So we, we want to state our critical values. Okay, so the critical values are the values that make it equal to 0 make the inequality or one side of the inequality equal to zero. So we've done this already. It's like your solution. What would be the critical values? Positive and negative two. So our, I call them CVs. Oops, I'm lazy. I don't know. X equals two and negative two. Right? If X was two, then the left side would be zero of the inequality. Or if it was negative 2, the left side would also still be 0. Because 0 times anything is 0. Okay? So why is 0 important? Well, 0 is neither positive or negative. On one side, so at negative 2 and 2, we're going to do a number line. On one side of negative, like at negative 2, it was 0. Meaning, on one side it was a positive, on the other side it was a negative. Let's think about quadratics, right? Think about this as if it was an equation. Y equals x squared minus 4. Those would be your x-intercepts, right? And so on, if you think of a graph, the graph of y equals x squared minus 4, x-intercepts of negative 2 and 2, does this graph open up or down? Y equals x squared minus 4. Up. It ha so it would have to look something like this, right? So you can see 
On one side of negative two, the graph was above the x-axis. It was a positive y value. Between negative two and q were negative y values. And then greater than two, we are positive y values. So we're going to do a test. Once you have your critical values, we're going to choose numbers in each interval. So I need to choose a number in this first interval here between negative infinity and negative 2. Any number. Can we not play with this? <laughs> See all these posts on Facebook, and I'm like, oh, they're no big deal. I've never had any issues. <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> Record gone. Okay, so we're going to choose any number between 